to play You've got stories for your day From one infinity, it's clear to see The finest sea and sea It's the cutting edge podcast Let's take a fight all right welcome in everybody to the cutting edge podcast this is episode two i am one of your hosts stone also known as stone fidity and joining me is morgan i'm morgan hop morgan for short my friends call me morgan you can call me that too <laughs> so in today's episode morgan's had a heart attack and along with that we're going to be talking about onefinity um what is onefinity who is onefinity what do we do and what sets us apart from the rest of the hobby CNC manufacturers. So let's get into it. Well, I think first off, you know, what's obvious here, two just extremely handsome uh, spokespeople. That's mm. that's the one thing. Um, but it's a whole lot more than that. We're just kind of a footnote in the whole what makes Onefinity awesome thing. Um. Gosh, where to start? All the details. Well, let's start at the beginning. All right. Um, so Onefinity actually has not always been a CNC manufacturer. Um, going way back, I believe, to 2012 or 2013, Onefinity actually... Time Machines. Yes, Time yes. Machines. Um, no, we started off as a dust boot company. Um, the second dust boot, which we still sell today, um, was our very first product. So... Um, Mark Chaperny, our founder and CEO and president, um, invented the Suck It Dust Boot for uh, use on other hobby CNCs. So um, to give you a little bit of background, Mark is an engineer. Um, he has made several medical devices, um, has a lot of patents, um, but he was using a hobby CNC um, in his home shop just for prototyping and things like that. And he developed the Suck It Dust Boot. Um, and that kind of, uh, started selling. And after, uh, about seven years, I guess in, uh, 2020, one Infinity launched as a CNC manufacturer. Um, but the whole, I guess, kind of deal behind that was we wanted to introduce, um, industrial level CNC components to hobby CNCs. Um, so Morgan, I'll let you kind of take that and talk a little bit more about that sure yeah and just just to kind of piggyback off of uh what you were just talking about so he had this the the suck it dust boot mark did and um it's it's my understanding let me know if i'm wrong about my my history here but um so he he made that for to be basically be able to you know work on the other hobby cncs mm -hmm. and as they came out with new models um they didn't let him know that that specs changed and like designs change and then like they would come out with this new thing and then his boot wouldn't fit and so then he would have to kind of like catch up after the thing was already out and they just kind of like out of frustration was like ah i'm just gonna make my own cnc and yeah like, so i don't know the exact story behind that but yeah i think it was something along those lines where things were getting changed and he was frustrated because uh things weren't it would be past. almost like when you know every year a new a new Samsung or a new iPhone comes out and they don't tell Belkin what the new specs are. Yeah, so they um, can't make a case for it or something like that. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. a good example. Yeah, so um, that's that, that's my understanding. It was just like ah, whatever, forget it. I'm gonna make my own CNC. <laughs> yeah, because I know starting out they were 3D printed, um, and then eventually switched over to an injection molded boot, and now. Um, it's still injection molded, but it looks a little different. Um, but everything now is made for one finities. So we're just making them for one finities now. Um, I know some people have retrofitted them to make them work on their CNCs. Um, but yeah, so the, uh, the dust boot with the arms that are, uh, distended from the Z axis, that is his design. And, uh, that's how one finity got started. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I just, I, and again, that maybe I may have misheard that. No, no, no. That's right. I, I believe you're right about that. I don't know like all the specifics, but that does sound sound right. But but with that, um, and again, I've I've never heard this from from the horse's mouth himself. But uh, when when Mark comes on, when we have him on, at some point, um, we'll have him tell the kind of 
the origin story, the hero's journey of. And I'm sure he'll tell the story a lot better than we will. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so in um, in deciding to start making uh, his own CNC, start designing his own CNC, as an engineer, he recognized a lot of things uh, that could be improved on in the design of a hobby CNC. Uh, how it, you know, how many, just how many parts it uses, um, its drive system, and um, you know, a lot of things that made it made it uh, easier to put together, more reliable with fewer parts, and um, and more cost effective to make and and sell just because you know fewer parts is. Uh, I mean, the thing is, just it's built so logically that um, it it really kind of upended the. The hobby CNC market in just the way that machines typically had been designed with um, with either lead screws or a rack and pinion drive system. This used a uh, this used a ball screw, which it, in industrial machines, yes, you you did see that that was um, you know fairly common, but not in a hobby CNC market. Not uh, I mean incredibly rare, and if it did exist, I mean you just you hardly ever saw it. So. Kind of bringing the, the idea for him was to bring those uh, kind of industrial level um, design elements to a hobby CNC market. Yeah, so I think you pretty much hit the nail on the head there. Just um, between the build quality, the drive system, um, and then I think another big part of it is the ease of assembly. Um it's crazy because like you said, he did really just take everything and he kind of oversimplified it. Um, but in oversimplifying it, he took everything that was not necessary away and he found a way to make it sturdier. He made it easier to set up. Um, and on top of all of that, the, the amount of maintenance that is required after all of that between, um, you know, belts and V wheels and, uh, ball screws the biggest difference is yes you get a, a much more accurate drive system but you have so much less maintenance because all you're having to do is you know take a bit of compressed air and blow the the debris out of the ball nut use a little bit of oil on it and you're good to go um, whereas with the belts and v wheels um, i know you're making constant adjustments to your belts tightening those because belts are going to stretch uh, plastic V wheels, they're going to wear out as they run through aluminum extrusions, things like that. So it's really just, it's not just saving time up front. It's also saving you time down the road when you're in between carves and things like that. Um, so it just kind of makes your life a little bit easier in the long run too. Um, one thing I think that makes it so much easier is like Morgan said, it uses so many less pieces. Um, with assembling most hobby CNCs, you're talking about, you know, a minimum of five of six hours of time spent on your hands and knees in the floor with bags of nuts and bolts and extrusions and things like that, where you are just bolting things together. Um, but with the Onefinity system, you get four boxes and then you have 30 ish bolts, um, depending on which machine you get. And, you know, it takes, 15 to 30 minutes to put it together and within an hour you're carving. So um, it really, it, it makes the user experience a lot better, I think. Yeah. And I, I've, I've actually had people, um, I, I had people tell me that other machines kind of in, in the similar space in the similar market, take them. Uh, I mean, focusing completely on the assembly of that machine, two full days. Mm-hmm um if not more you know so uh it, it's it, it's incredible that you can have you know a machine that is is carving within an hour and that's if you are kind of taking it easy you know <laughs> like yeah so i believe you've you've timed yourself and gotten it put together in under 15 minutes right 12 minutes is my record 12 minutes that's that's ridiculous. I think it was actually like 12 minutes and two seconds or something like that, but 12 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's just, that's just bonkers. So, um, I think I, I, will I, say, think about, I put a lot more together than most people. So 
I do have sure, a little, yes, yeah. You know. You're used to it. It's like it's like those videos that you see, you know, like those military guys, they'll blindfold themselves and take apart their gun and clean it, put it back together and it's like I 30 to seconds. That. Yeah, it's like I that's what I picture you doing with a machine. Um but yeah, I, I think that it's uh it, I th- I think about this this movie that we were uh, that I watched on the plane on our way up to uh New York to the Catskills for uh Maker Camp. I watched this movie Blackberry. Um, you remember the old phones that you know had the full keyboard that you could email and text and stuff on? Um, it was, was I mean, they me. had like they had the like they were they dominated the market um, until the day the iPhone came out, and now they dominate none of it. They're not even a thing anymore. Um, I feel like the Onefinity just because of how it, different it is made and how well it is made and how um i don't know just all the benefits surrounding it i i I feel like that is the iphone to the hobby cnc world um when when that came out and we just you know obviously they come out with a new model every year and we just keep improving our design and adding to the the rigidity and the precision and the functionality that that our machines offer uh year after year too so um it's uh really kind of it's kind of upended the market. Yeah, I think one thing, um, just t- listening to you talk about that, one thing that kind of came to mind, um, and we don't really talk about it a lot, but we as a company don't offer a software package specific to our machines and their operating systems, um, and that's something that most other hobby CNC companies do, um, but we don't really see that as a disadvantage. Um, some people say, you know, like they like to have the integrated software and I understand that. Um, but at the same time, not focusing on that software allows us to focus solely on the machine um, and the capabilities that it can actually achieve. Um, so obviously, yes, software is a very important part of CNC. Um, and we do, we have a couple softwares that we sell, um, but, but for us, the main focus is the machine itself and not the software. So we can improve on that um, because there are dedicated companies out there making software for these CNC's um, that's much more high end, can do a lot more than all these other hobby CNC software programs can. Um, so it's really, it's a trade off, but that allows us to do more on the machine side um, to really test our machines and focus on that rather than focusing on the software that integrates with them. Um, so that's another thing that we don't really talk about a lot, but I think that's a big advantage of Onefinity over those other companies um, because it does allow us, like I said, to focus on the machine um, rather than software. Yeah, I mean, it, sure, I, uh, sure, like, you know, a proprietary software is nice, but I mean, there's, I think it would it really, it would, yeah, like you said, it would, it would shift our focus unnecessarily there's some great software out there that you can do everything um you can already do everything that you need to do with a onefinity cnc on like vcarve or carveco there's no there's really no reason for us to have our own software i mean those are they're so they're they're both so robust so easy to use and understand i just it just doesn't make any sense to put any 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 time or resources into that um you know just focus on making the best machine it's like you know ford or uh chevy they don't they don't make their own gas they don't have their own gas stations there's already you know other it's already other companies that are doing that just fine they're doing yeah. great they make good cars you know that's uh doesn't, doesn't seem necessary well and part of the one of the things we kind of touched on in our last episode was um, the community around this. And that kind of goes back to the community aspect of it, where we're working with other companies in their community. We have uh, Vectric, we sell VCarve and VCarve Pro, and then we have CarveCo, where we sell Maker and Maker Plus. Um, and working with those two companies not only allows us to offer software um, that does more than, you know, a basic uh whatever whatever basic software you might use otherwise um but it also allows us to work with those companies and expand out into the community even more um, because of the connections we're making so yeah 
and like you know like i said like they 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 had been in the software business for a long Long, time longer than i've been alive well like what are we gonna do better than they are already doing it like exactly focus on making good machines you know like yeah you know do two things okay or do one thing very well you know that's we choose to want to do the one thing very well Mm. it's a very good way of looking at it um uh, i don't know so all right he'll just do this had to get a dr pepper so we took a quick break but we're back And and we're back we are going to get into um, the different machine types, um, kind of chronologically, um, just starting out from Onefinity's start and uh, working our way up to the present day. Um, so we started the company, um, I guess we officially started taking orders back in April, May of 2020. Um, so Onefinity launched right at the beginning of a giant pandemic, um, which is kind of crazy. Um, most people and not don't just any giant pandemic, the pandemic, the pandemic. Yes. This the happened 21st century. very, very, very beginning of COVID-19. Um, we were finalizing everything, getting ready to start taking orders and the pandemic hit and shut everything down. So that really kind of threw a wrench in things at first. Um, and, uh, I think like everybody, like we were just concerned cause no one knew what was going to happen. Um, This is the first time in any of our lives that anything like this had happened and uh, no one was prepared for it. So uh, it was an interesting time. Uh, But yeah, we started taking orders um, April, May ish of 2020. I don't remember exactly. I want to say I'd take that back. It was May 20th of 2020. Uh, That was the very first day we took orders. Um, We were worried because there's a pandemic. We didn't know what was going to happen. Um, but I want to, I want to say that probably because of the pandemic, it worked out even better than we could have anticipated because people were trapped at home and couldn't get out and people were looking for something to do. Um, and I think a lot of the people that were interested in hobby CNC's took that as an opportunity to get into it, uh, because they had all the time in the world and literally couldn't go anywhere. So, uh, that really, I feel helped. like that would be. I feel like that would just be like an incredibly nerve wracking time to start a new business, not just any new business, but a business that, you know, you're not, you're not making, uh, you know, mugs or hats. Like these are every machine you invest a lot of money into sourcing the materials for to, I mean, like it's, these are high ticket items and you're, you're launching this brand new company where there are already, other brands that are making, I don't want to say similar things, but you know, the, the thing that you're are making a new version of. Um, and so I think supply chains would be, would have been the thing that would make me the most nervous because like the whole, the global supply chain just kind of got a wrench thrown in the gears right then and there. So it's like, okay, people are excited about this thing. They have the time to, to use them they have the resources to use them but can we actually get them like can we actually get the materials and and actually you know supply them to enough people that want to buy them that that's it's crazy how all that i mean like you have to weigh those those two those two and many other factors but um yeah it's just it it launched at the most kind of globally volatile time so kind of to provide a little bit of background info there. Um, <clears throat> when we started taking orders, um, there was, I believe it was like a 10 to 12 week lead time on the initial orders. Um, and part of that was one, we were just starting out. And like you said, um, it was COVID and there were a lot of supply chain issues just because everything was shut down. Um, so I think I started on all the video and all that stuff. Um, like assembly video and stuff. I did that around August and I want to say the first machine shipped in September. Um, But those it's at the very beginning, I guess let's go back here. We started out with our, what is now known as our original series. Um, At the time they were just the X 35 woodworker and the X 35 machinist. Um, 
So they're 35 millimeter hardened steel uh, hollow tubes um, that sit into milled aluminum uh, feet and gantry blocks. Um, they use linear bearings. Obviously, we've already kind of touched on these ball screw and ball nut drive system. Um, but all of that was very new to the hobby CNC world because it was uh, kind of moving from extruded aluminum into that. Um, so instead of being an extruded piece, it was a milled piece out of one solid block of aluminum. Um, and then obviously with the steel tubes, um, you have a lot more rigidity with steel than you do with aluminum. Um, so that was kind of the, the, the flagship line of machines. There was the X 35 series. Um, and I'll let you go with the, let you keep going with the next stuff. Kind of take it down oh. the line. Oh, well, thanks. I've been Sam. talking too for long. <laughs> See, I feel like I ramble on and I do, but, uh, anyway, so, um, yeah, so the X 35s, um, X 35 machines, 35 millimeter rails and, um, you know, because that was so new uh, and people are used to uh, extruded aluminum, it was kind of perceived that uh, that's, you know, that's the standard. There's a reason that's a standard it's because that's, you know, that's what's strong. Like these hollow, unsupported steel tubes, there's no way that that's going to have the rigidity that you need for um, for a CNC. But if you know anything about uh, engineering or physics or just how things work, you um, Steel, hollow steel tubes are uh, are going to be a lot more rigid um, and a lot sturdier than extruded aluminum, especially when you apply torsion. So mm. torsion meaning, you know, like here's here's a thing. Like if you apply pressure here, it's it's pretty good. But if you try twisting it, twi torsion is twisting. Um, it it does terribly. Uh, extruded aluminum. Not, I mean, 99 times out of 100 will do terribly under uh, torsion pressure. But anyway, that was a little bit of a tangent. Um, so anyway, uh, we were like, okay, fine. We can get the tubes bigger. Let's make the tubes bigger. So we went from 35 millimeter tubes to 50 millimeter tubes. And I believe the walls of the tubes got thicker as well. Yeah, they're about two millimeters thicker. Yeah. So the, the walls of the tubes got thicker. The diameter of the tubes got thicker. And then we started uh, adding like, okay, you can put a stiffy on, on your X rail. And that, that means, and so it's not just two tubes. Now it's three with the center of the top one kind of offset to offset the weight of the, um, the Z slider and whatever spindle or router you have on that to kind of center the uh, center, the weight along that axis. And just, they, they just got, bigger and beefier and more rigid and that rigidity meant more precision as it moved along these axes. And um, so th that was our X 50 line. And so we're like, okay, mechanically we can't really get much better than this. I mean, like it's, it's as strong. It's as, uh, it's as rigid and precise as it can possibly be. What other improvements can we make? And then that's when we started, um, that's when we introduced the elite series with the Maso controllers because it just added uh, a much more um, industrial level of um, functionality to the machine than uh, than you know ours or really anything else in the space at the time. Um, like I mean, just like straight up factory level functionality on on hobby CNCs. Yeah, so kind of to add to what you're saying. So the Maso controller um, was previous, I mean, before we really started using it, there were maybe one or two other uh, CNC brands out there that were using it in production, um, but not near the quantities that we are, I guess. Um, so we, we really kind of opened things up with that because um, like you said, the Maso controller provides a more industrial um, more professional controller where you have uh, the same functions and offsets and things like that you would see on a big, you know, 10 by five, five by 10 or four by eight or whatever CNC versus, you know, a 24 by 24 desktop CNC that's using a very simple controller, more similar to our build botics style controller. Um, and that's something we didn't touch on was the build botics controller. Um, so that is the, 
open source controller platform that runs our original series. Um, and then over uh, the last year or so, when we introduced the Pro Series, um, which is kind of a hybrid between our Elite Series and our original series, it also uses that controller. Um, so yeah, we have the two controllers um, with the BuildBotics kind of being the, uh, I don't wanna say beginner because if you're a beginner, it still has some learning curve. Um, Flagship. But it's it's the, I guess, the easier of the two to learn and operate, um, whereas the Masso is going to be more for people who are running full-time production or um, doing things that require a little more accuracy and stuff like that. Um, so, but yeah. let me let, let me interject there real quick. Like the Bill Boddix controller, I don't... I don't want it to sound like we're, we're saying that it's, it's less than, or no, 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 not no, good no. at all. Like it's, it, it was, uh, having a, an integrated touchscreen controller where you don't have to plug a laptop into your machine and control it from something else completely having a, a touchscreen integrated, um, interface, uh, you know, that, that was huge. That, and that made the machine a lot more, uh, approachable definitely um to the beginner than you know having to use mock was it mock five mock three something mock three or mock four yeah there's a bunch of different softwares that you can use to to connect a laptop to a cnc but i mean having it having it integrated i think was was huge and that took a lot of the guesswork out of of um getting into uh using a cnc so that that was another thing that that i think helped us a lot well, I'm glad you brought that up because that's one thing that we didn't touch on earlier. Um, what sets one infinity apart? That's another big, big thing is all of our CNC machines and their controllers can be used uh, as standalone systems where you make your code or whatever on a computer. Um, but once you've exported that code, you do not need that computer anymore to run the code. So you don't have to have a computer hooked up to the machine, whether it's the Maso or the BuildBotics. Um, to run it. So that's a big difference in um, the one affinity as well. And that also kind of ties back into the, the integrated software. Typically, if you have integrated software, you're going to have to connect to the machine with a USB. Um, so we give you the freedom to um, connect via a network, whether that's Wi-Fi or a network cable, or you can just load it via USB. So you have multiple options of how you're going to do those things. Um, so that's another thing that sets us apart. And I know that kind of got back off topic, but uh, it tied into what we were talking about earlier. And I wanted to make sure that we pointed that out. So, yeah, no, it's good, though, because like it's it's, you know, it's kind of uh, you know, we're like, oh, yeah, we, we forgot to mention this. It's good. Yeah. Organically, we come back to it because, you know, we're it, this is not a scripted show. We're not we're not reading off of anything. We just kind of we try to keep it, you know, uh, logically flowing forward but you know sometimes we miss something we got to go back to it but it's it's not a we're, it's not a sales pitch it's not a commercial yeah. it's not a uh uh what are they infomercial it's it just you know but anyways we, you know to kind of sum up the machines just to go back through real quick so you have the original series which is was the x35 is now the original series um X35, 35 millimeter tubes. That's the easy way to think about it. Um, the number is in there and uh, it makes it, the X rail is 35 or the X rail is 50. Now on the um, Pro Series and the Elite Series, both of you use, both of those, sorry, I can't talk. Both of those use the 50 millimeter X rail um, on all of the machines. Now, the only difference there is on the Foreman, which is the 4x4 machine, um, because of the longer axis, we use all 50 millimeter tubes for those. So you're going to get 50 millimeter tubes on the Ys and the X there versus a 50 millimeter tube on the X and 35 on the Y if you had a woodworker or a journeyman, just because um, those, those smaller tubes on a shorter rail the rigidity is the same as a longer, bigger tube, if that makes sense. Well, good talk, Stone. Um, let's just close. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> Why would you do that to me? <laughs> oh, I do that. That's just the thing that I do. Um, it's not you. Don't take it personal. Um, yeah. So we covered the machines, right? We covered the machines. Uh, we covered kind of who we are. Oh, and not that it, uh, not that even it really matters all that much, but based in Canada, just outside of Toronto, right? Yeah. So we are exactly. in Newmarket, Ontario. If you want specifics, so yes, Newmarket, Ontario. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's so we we started and we officially taking orders in 2020. 2020. Here we are, 2024. Um, we have, you know, come up with, I mean, in just a pretty short amount of time, a lot made a lot of strides in terms of uh, our offerings and the series of machines that we now offer, the sizes, um, the, the controllers and the software and the interfaces, like all of it has all happened in a pretty astounding short amount of time. Well, I think one more thing I want to touch on. I know we're wrapping this up, but the last thing that we didn't talk about was um, accessories. Not only have we improved the machines over the last four years, we've added a ton of different accessories. Um, we started out with the seven watt from JTEC, and now we have a 14, a 24, and a 44 watt from JTEC as well. Um, obviously, we still have the suck it dust boot. We did talk about that, um, but we've added things like um, a tool setter. Um, we have the joy pads for jogging on the original and pro series machines on the elite series. You can add a pendant. So there's a lot of different things that you can attach to your machine, whether you get it from one Finity or you get it from someone else in the community who's making things for these machines. Um, but there's just a million different things you can add on and, uh, change your experience with. So, and not that we need to spend a whole bunch of time on it, but you know, I think we, we talked about kind of the a um, little bit of like the origin story, the the machines, the different series, um, but just kind of like who who One Infinity is like as a company, uh, like it just like as as people really. Um, like we we started um, from our, our our beginnings from the the founder to pretty much everybody that works. Uh, works for one finity is makers first and have been part of the uh part of the woodworking community um if not you know more specifically part of the cnc community for you know for a long time and so kind of transitioning into introducing this this new company and this new way of doing the hobby cnc um we 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 already had a lot of relationships in this community and in this industry. And so that kind of was able to, we were able to kind of, we were kind of a shoe in really. Um, and we are, we, we just, we maintain, we like to maintain those relationships with the maker community and continue to build up uh, these people and their, their businesses, their brands and, um, and grow with them. So you will see more and more, of the kind of, you know, popular woodworking maker personalities, um, adopt and, uh, you know, raise, raise the banner for one finity because, you know, not even just the machine aside, um, we, we just, we have relationships with these people and, uh, we, we, we want to continue to grow with them and for them to grow with us and, and just everybody, prosper so i mean that's i feel like that is another part you know of one finity that's worth mentioning is um just our our uh our commitment to the maker community i'd say that's the most important part so yeah absolutely but yeah you hit the nail on the head there man well that's i guess that that's really all i uh it's really all i had um yeah. we make outstanding machines we are continuing to innovate make better stuff better and more stuff every year and um people have noticed and they uh they're on board so yeah then there's lots more to come so yes all right well i think we're gonna wrap things up here and we will catch you guys on the next episode of the cutting edge podcast
Thanks for watching or listening. Y'all be good. See y'all. Gather around, it's time to play. We've got stories for your day. From Onefinity, it's clear to see the finest CNC. It's the Cutting Edge Podcast. Let's take a fight with designs and tools that ignite. From wood to steel, we peel and reveal the art of making done just right, right. Tips and tricks that elevate, craftsmanship that's first rate. Join the fun, we've just begun, the cutting edge away. On this journey side by side, hear the stories far and wide. From dream to deed, with utmost speed, where passion takes its stride. It's the Cutting Edge Podcast, let's take a fight. With designs and tools that ignite. From wood to steel, we peel and reveal. The art of making done just right. Done just right.